Today I'm taking a look at the brand new Giddy Lely ukulele kit from CB Giddy. So let's take a look at some of the things. We have all these parts and they're cut with a laser. So you'll notice that they all have these kind of brown edges. If you want to knock those off with some sandpaper, that's fine. I think I'm going to keep them just to kind of make the process a little faster. Just, and I think it looks kind of cool, the contrast between the, the dark and the light. So I'll do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow these instructions and I'll do my best to follow them and not get ahead of myself. Because sometimes, you know, you just see the pictures and, you know, this is really designed well. So you look at the pictures and you kind of know what to do. But I'll do some of the major parts. And then in no time, we're going to have the kit ready to go. So I'm really excited about this. First thing we're going to do is laminate these parts together and glue them. And then we're also going to put on the fretboard. So I'm going to move some of the stuff out of the way and then we can start gluing. Put down some paper on my workbench so I don't get a little bit of glue. You know, but this would also be fine, you know, on a kitchen table. Just put some newspaper down and move some stuff out of the way and get going. As we glue the neck together, remember to keep the Gita Lely logo on the top. And you also want to make sure that you have the screw holes on the bottom. If you mix it up, you won't have the logo or you might not have the pre-drilled holes. So that could be a problem. So you want to make sure that you get it all together and keep your fretboard handy because we're going to put that on pretty quick too to help glue it all together. With these laser cut wood pieces, you're going to have one side. It's a little bit prettier than the other side. You want to make sure that the one side is on the inside of the neck or on the inside of the box just for looks of the instrument. Before I laminate the neck together, I want to make sure my fretboard's ready to go. I can take my drill, just kind of barely touch them into these circles and that'll help these little screws sit nice and flush. These holes are now countersunk. So now I'm going to get some glue, have a small Phillips head screwdriver here and I'm going to glue the three pieces together and then get the fretboard glued and screwed together. I also have a couple of these basic clamps ready to go to provide some pressure as well. Got the fretboard on with a couple screws. Now I'm going to finish putting the rest of the screws in here. Then we can clamp our neck a little bit, set that aside while we do some more work. Now the screws are in. One thing that's cool is these screws will keep the fretboard on, but they'll also serve as fret markers. I've taken a rag and gotten rid of some of the glue squeeze out. So the screws are in the neck, clamped them up. Before I set it aside, I'm going to glue this string guide into place. This has a zero fret instead of a nut. So this guide will guide the strings over the zero fret and then towards the tuners. Here are the four pieces that will be the side of the box. So these fit together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide them together with a little bit of glue to form the box. The sides of the box are ready to go. I use my rag to get any squeeze out. Now let's move to the next step. Next I'm going to glue on the back. Make sure you understand what's the back and what will be the top. The top will have a notch for the neck and also a notch back here for the tailpiece. While the back of the box is drying, I'm going to round off the back of the neck. I'm going to use a belt sander, but you could also use a rasp or regular sandpaper. Just make sure you don't go too far down this way or you'll mess up the neck joint and the neck. There'll be a gap there. So I'm going to probably do a, about right there, round off the back of the neck. I just round off the back of the neck a little bit. Now it feels nice and comfortable in my hand. While the back continues to dry, I'm going to glue in the neck brace right into there and then clamp that up against the wall. I put the sound bar on top, but I haven't glued it in yet because I am making sure that the neck fits properly. I'm going to glue in the neck and also screw in the neck. And I've already countersunk the holes for that. This is a pretty good time to do any decorating you want to the box. You know, if you want to 
Mod Podge something on it or paint it or wood burn or something like that. Now is a good time. Okay, the neck is glued and screwed on. So I'm going to pop off the top and get ready to install the tailpiece. Here's the tailpiece. We'll put some glue on it and then slide it over this tab. The tailpiece is glued in place. So now it's time to put glue along here and to glue the soundboard onto the top. The soundboard is glued and clamped. While that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and install the neck brace here on the bottom. That takes two screws. And now I'm going to take the string ferrules, place them into the holes, and that'll give some extra strength back here at the tailpiece. While the soundboard's still drying, I'm going to go ahead and install the tuners. And that's just a matter of matching the tuners to the pre-drilled holes. The tuners are all installed. We are on the home stretch. I'm going to pop off these clamps, put the strings on, and then I can slot the bridge. Strings are now on. I'm going to mark where on the bridge to file down a little groove. Then I'll place the bridge 13 inches away from the zero fret. The grooves are in the bridge. I'm going to tune it up. Then I'll make some slight adjustments to the bridge if I need to to make sure the intonation is right. I just finished this ukulele kit out in the garage. Now I'll talk a little bit more about it and then give you a quick demo. This kit was really fun to put together. The instructions were easy to follow and it didn't take a whole lot of tools to put it together. Of course, the assembly time is going to vary depending on your experience level. I was able to put it together in the afternoon and that's also including the time it took to film the little sections that you just saw. There's all sorts of things you could do to personalize it. Of course, you could put some kind of lacquer or polyurethane on the outside, color it, you could modge podge it, you could do all sorts of different things. Something like this would be really fun to put together at a building workshop at a ukulele festival. I can also see this being a really fun Christmas present that you could put together while the kids are out of school. A lot of people want to get into ukulele building, but they don't have the tools and the resources, so this is a really nice way to get your feet wet. Not only was this a lot of fun to put together, it's also a lot of fun to play.